Fleca, the holistic health boss, your functional health practitioner and expert. And I am so excited to be back on the blog with you guys this week after taking two weeks off why I spent the last two weeks touring around Thailand and Hong Kong. And I have to tell you that I feel healthier than I have in years. And I don't just say that because I took a well-deserved vacation from work and the stress of life, but because I actually have noticed a very significant improvement in my health compared to trips that I've taken in the past. So this time last year, I actually spent three weeks traveling all over Europe. I went to Croatia, Italy, Italy, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. And while I certainly enjoyed all the beautiful sites and cities that I explored, there was a nagging sense of fatigue, bloating, brain fog, and weight gain running in the background the whole entire time. I did my best to make the most of my trip to Europe last year, but honestly, I was, exa I was exhausted most of the time. My face felt puffy every morning, my clothes were fitting a little too tight, and the second I sat down on a train, a plane, or any type of vehicle, I was dozing off to sleep because I was just tired. Now, most people would chalk this, these feelings up to being jet lagged and also um, maybe just getting old, but there was a part of me that wanted to as well, but I knew that this swollen, less excited, less energetic version of me wasn't really me. At the time, I didn't know it, but I was what, what I was feeling was actually a part of my soon-to-be diagnosed Hashimoto's and mold illness, because about a week after my return from Europe, I received my diagnosis, and just a few weeks later, a test revealed that we had toxic mold in our home. So I spent the better part of probably two to three years leading up to those two moments last year feeling as if I was trying to dig myself out of some poor health hole that I wasn't sure how exactly I had landed in it. All I knew was that I wanted to feel like my best self again, the same fit and energetic version of me from 2013 when I felt at the peak of optimal health for me. Now looking back, I can see exactly what led to my demise over time. I was wrapped up in um, working a very stressful job for a struggling startup company as the VP of Strategic Wellness Planning. I was adding in extra work hours on the side as a personal trainer to get my business up and off the ground. There was mysterious mold in my home that I had no idea about at the time. I was eating healthy but not consciously and not always right for my body. And I wasn't making enough time for myself and then I was binging on self-care in short spurts. So very unbalanced. And I was searching for purpose in social scenes and having one too many drinks oftentimes. I was running long distances after late nights and hitting the weights way too hard at the gym the next morning and so on. And mind you, a lot of these actions held true for me for most of my life. And for a long time, my body was able to adapt and recover, but at some point it reached its threshold and couldn't handle it anymore. So adaptation or lack of adaptation is a tricky thing that I try to explain to clients and they want to know, you know, but why was I able to eat this or do that my whole life? And then all of a sudden now it's a problem, which is exactly what I experience as well. And the truth is it's always kind of been a problem taking part in those actions. But our body is as amazing at adapting to whatever its situation is. It's almost as if it's looking for the most efficient way to accomplish a task, whether it's something that you consciously embark on, such as hitting a baseball, or some physiological function that is running in the background, essentially. However, there's one flaw. You only have so much vital reserve to run on before your body starts to break down. And this is exactly kind of the poor health that I was experiencing last year. Each of us has a different threshold for our vital reserve, AKA our ability to adapt and how much stress our body can handle based upon our genetics and where our weak links are placed. You know, think of the old theory or the saying survival of the fittest. It points out that what we know evolutionary is that the strongest survive and the weakest typically don't. However, in these modern times, we're able to bypass the typical evolutionary process. We can outsmart disease with what we know about the body and we can easily identify what's contributing to disease and take action to reduce it, enhancing our vital reserve and improving our chances for survival, essentially. 
So this is exactly what I started doing even more intensely a year ago to achieve the way that I feel today. I started coaching up my vital reserve more because the accumulation of stress on my body intensified when I started working from home full time in a toxic mold infested place. My body's re reserve and ability to adapt to the stress of my lifestyle with the added extra stress of the environmental toxins from mold drastically decreased and I hit my threshold as a result and an autoimmune process basically flourished. So this is what I want to share more with you about this week is what I've done to enhance my vital reserve to reserve to reverse the autoimmune process and to feel my healthiest as the feel the healthiest I've been in years and how you can do the same. So let's talk about this vital reserve and what the body needs to enhance vital reserve because now my energy even surprises me. At the end of the day, I'm astonished at how much I have accomplished and how much energy I still have left. Sometimes I even underestimate my energy ability as if I have PTSD from being so fatigued in the past. And um, it's quite surprising. And this recent trip to Thailand really brought to light how much healthier I really truly am from all the work I've been doing. I had zero jet lag even after only sleeping for four hours on a 30 plus hour travel day. I didn't need or even want to take a nap after long days of hiking, snorkeling, walking, and sightseeing. I could have a cocktail without it kicking my ass the next day or destroying my sleep. And I woke up feeling rested every single morning with the sunrise and ready to take on the day. I was able to think clearly, stay focused, and maintain a joyful mood. And I felt at home in my body, slim and trim the whole time, which was so different than what I experienced in Europe last year. I'm so grateful for the way I feel my body today, and it makes every ounce of effort I have put into healing myself this past year more than worth it to experience life like this. When I received my Hashimoto's diagnosis and found the toxic mold in my home last fall, I made a promise to myself to not let these situations get the better of me. And I hunkered down, I got, business, I got to business taking even better care of myself to coach up my body's vital reserve and started the slow road to a full recovery, which is where I am here today. What I did was actually really simple. It didn't take any, I didn't take any magic pills, try any elaborate or expensive therapies, and I didn't rely on prescription medications to mask my symptoms to make me appear to feel better. I simply focused on the general principles of health and creating consistency with those general principles of health. Now, as a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, focusing on the general principles of health is the backbone to the training that I've received and the work that I do with myself as well as with my clients to restore health to our bodies. The general principles of health have worked for thousands of years and have proven to outperform specific treatments for disease. They are simple yet extremely impactful. And before we had modern medicine, all we had were the general principles of health, such as eating healthy, sleeping, moving our body, de-stressing at the end of the day, and the use of herbs or vitamins to support bodily function functions. That's it. Now the body wants to be in balance. It doesn't want to be out of balance. And given the right resources, the body is able to build up its vital reserve and it will always return to its preferred state of balance no matter what the situation is. Now the body thrives on consistency. This is, should be no surprise to us, but it is. Just think, the more consistently you do something, the better you become at it. This holds true for anything that we do in life, such as riding a bike, hitting a baseball, our job, being a parent, cooking, etc. Practice makes perfect, as the old saying goes. Consistency paves the way for our body to, be, to adapt, to become more efficient. If we are consistently emerged in activities that don't support our health, our body will adapt, utilize its valuable resources until there are no more, and eventually give way to sickness. Or if we are consist consistently engaged in activities that support our health, our body will also adapt, become more efficient, actually use fewer resources and promote greater health overall, conserving its vital reserve. And if we are somewhere in between consistently bouncing back and 
forth creating a roller coaster and our body our body will struggle to adapt it will drain its resources and in doing so eventually reach its threshold you can think of this similarly to the wear and tear on your car you know driving in the city with constant stopping and going produces more wear and tear on your car versus just hopping on the freeway and driving at one speed without stopping for a period of time. In fact, most modern cars even kick into a fuel efficient state um, when you drive at a constant speed for a period of time, just kind of like our body does. It adapts and becomes more efficient. Consistency has carried me back to a place of, of feeling like myself again, and it's extremely important to, for health. In order to restore my vital reserve and return my body back to balance, I focus on creating consistency this past year in the general principles of health. I more consistently went to bed within a few hours after sunset at least six nights a week. I made self-care part of my daily routine instead of binging on the weekends or once a month. I created consistency around an engaged meditation practice that promoted positive thoughts and healing. I set healthy boundaries around work and anything else that drained my energy and created consistency around that. I created consistency around eating 100% grain, dairy, soy, sugar, and alcohol three for over three months and now I still do that 90% of the time. I worked on being more present and making empowered choices that always had me in mind and took my supplements religiously to nourish my body and heal it and then I tested it again to monitor my progress and make adjustments to my healing plan when needed and created consistency with that as well. Now all of my efforts have paid off in order to feel as healthy and more like myself than I have in a long time on this trip. By all means, I have not been perfect in my commitment to restore balance to my body and to create consistency, but I have stared temptation in the face and had lengthy conversations in my head about giving in and giving up. And at times I've even felt alone on this journey and in some of the choices I've had to make for me, but consistency was still key. Each time I felt challenged on my journey, I reconnected with what really mattered, my health and feeling like myself again. And it, was, and it always helped me get back on track to creating that consistency that my body was going to strive for and would thrive on. So if you feel stuck when it comes to your health or struggle with getting back to feeling like yourself, consider how consistent or not that you have been with some of those general principles of health. You know, do you find yourself doing healthy things all week but then binging on the weekends and unhealthy activities or maybe you're super healthy at home but let loose too much when you're traveling um, for work or for pleasure. I certainly used to do that. Or maybe you run a type and help, tight and healthy ship for extended periods of time that just leave you feeling deprived and you eventually throw in the towel and give in and binge on something else. Healthy is a way of being, it's not just a way of doing. So you can do all the healthy things in the world, but if you don't embrace it as a lifestyle and create consistency, you'll constantly be swimming upstream. And when you do embrace healthy as a lifestyle it, and create that consistency, it will significantly get easier. You'll find yourself riding with the current, with the wind in your sails. So if you're ready to you know, break the roller coaster ride and this cycle and to create consistency to promote your health, then I want to invite you to schedule a chat with me. Um, you can schedule a complimentary ideal health and weight discovery session by clicking on the link below or going back to the email where you found this um, video and blog. And I would love to help you create consistency so that you can feel the healthiest that you've ever felt in the same way that I have too. There is always hope. Know that your situation is not unique. Somebody has been there in your shoes and I would be more than happy to guide you along the path back to a full recovery or feeling like yourself again. So I hope this was helpful. Go out and see what kind of consistency you can create in those general principles of health and I'll see you next Thursday on the blog.